Stand by for course change of four degrees starboard at my command. You want to introduce yourself real quick what's up kyle montagetti nice what kind of car is this this is a 97 240sx also known as the koki nice this thing's beautiful thank you thank you oh yeah you want to start in the engine bay yeah so uh original motor was a ls2 all aluminum uh right now it's a 408 stroker um basically top to bottom build made a 520 ish on the dyno to the wheels and you said uh, this started life as an LS2? This did start life as an LS2. It was out of a 06 GTO with a full swap came from a T56 and the motor itself. Nice. That intake looks gnarly. I've never seen um, that style of the, uh, for the LS intake. Usually they look lighter. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is the truck intake. Um, I had uh, Tony Mamo blueprint the motor and uh, he used to work for AFR, which is a big uh, LS part company. and. Uh, talking to him since we were going to go NA, we wanted the best airflow that the motor could get. And this basically, the way that the runners are on the inside of the intake, they are just the most direct you can get it. So everything's uh, like polished and um, what is it called? Like uh, port match. Everything's port matched in the motor, so best airflow you can get. So this this intake was custom designed for your setup. This or, is not like, custom for my setup. It's just they do make it it's custom for the truck setup because the truck motor sits further down in the engine bay, so they get the intake up more to get better airflow. And it's just it is one of the best air flowing LS intakes that you can get. So is it um is it give you more low end power? It does. It gives you a lot of like. It's, it's basically full range power. Like the torque curve on this car is up at 2000 RPMs and all the way across. Nice, hell yeah. Is it stock internals or you said you got a stroker? No, right it's full stroker. So I mean, top to bottom, um, off the top of my head, I'm not, I don't remember the parts exactly, but I mean, everything's, everything's fully built. It revs up to about 7,400 and it makes power all the way up. It's got, you know, rods, crank is, uh, forged, it's got different heads in it, you know, titanium valve springs, all the goods that you need to have a high revving uh, NA motor. It's got a Nick Williams 102 uh, throttle body on it. Oh, yeah. What kind of ECU are you? Uh, I am running the Holly Terminator ECU, and we have the uh, Holly Terminator dash in here too, and uh, custom wiring throughout the whole car. We did it ourselves. We've had a uh, we had another wiring harness. I'm not, you know, it didn't really work out for us, so we just ended up doing a full custom harness. Yeah. Um, where do you get all the the wiring for that harness? Um, we it was different parts. Realistically, uh, I mean, a lot of eBay and stuff like that, and uh, just going through a lot of Summit parts. Okay. Looks really nice. The engine bay. Yeah, it's I like, appreciate uh, it. I appreciate it. All the wiring and everything looks. looks yeah, really yeah. Nice. I really like to. The whole car was supposed to be kind of a show car slash drift car to me drifting has a lot of style and uh, I really wanted the engine bay to be as clean as possible so when you pop the hood people want to look at it so all the fab work done to it all the wiring is all supposed to be functional slash is best looking as you can get it <laughs> <laughs> this definitely caught my eye I had to check it out in person I appreciate it I, I appreciate it <laughs> heck yeah oh yeah and you, you guys did the tubs yourself? Yeah, so the tubs are, um, they are your usual trailer half tubs, but then all the bead rolled panels on the side here are all done by my buddy Slide and Shamrock um, and custom, yeah, put in there and shaped and all that, this bottom half right here. But yeah, this body of, is your usual trailer half. Yeah, this, uh, this front piece actually here is four bolts. It's these two Allens here. 
And then there's two Allens down on the bottom and this whole front end of the car comes off all as one piece. So you can take the motor out just without a, anything really just pulls right out the front if you need to get it so that must be so convenient super convenient <laughs> when a drift car and you're always doing that pull this motor at least seven times and it's just yeah it's just you can do it in a day with this yeah. this easy mod so yeah stuff like that makes life so much easier yeah it's like <laughs> yeah we definitely want that while we're out here we've already seen multiple people pulling transmissions and pulling motors and stuff out here yesterday so <laughs> it's uh anything that makes it easier is better for sure oh right. so what kind of suspension are you running so in the front um the whole car is on fortunato coilovers uh i love them they're they've done super well these are their older ones and i've just i've had them and they just have done so well for me i had to change them again the front end is a uh, wise fab version one uh, it's also powder coated purple though, because the whole underside of the car is done the same as the top side of the car. We just try to leave no bolt unturned. Wow. So yeah. you even powder coated like the subframe? Yeah, thing? yeah. So subframe is custom, also done by my buddy Slide and Shamrock. Uh, it's moved forward so we don't have to run any rack spacers or anything like that. Everything, both the subframes are reinforced. We have the GK Tech reinforcements all welded in the back, powder coated. The front's done all fully custom and powder coated also braced and moved, so. So when you say you moved everything forward, is it the actual subframe move forward? No, the rack moves forward in the subframe. The subframe is in the same positions, the same stock positioning, oh, but okay. the rack needs to move forward because with the Wise Fab, the tie rods end up getting bent, or they have like a weird angle and then they get locked up. And so when you're at full lock, a lot of people have problems with that, unless you get, they, they make a Wise Fab, Wise Fab kit now, but they didn't when I got it. So we ended up just doing it fully custom ourselves, so. So how far did you guys move the rack? Oh, forward? it's been a while since I've done it, but I think it's somewhere close to an inch forward. We basically oh. moved it as far forward as it, uh, the oil pan would let us, yeah. so. And uh, I'm, I don't have any binding issues at full lock. So. Oh, yeah. And you, um, you said you also have Wise Fab in the rear? Too? No, the rear end of the car is actually full PBM because um, oh. the, uh, the the whole car, whole car used to be PBM. Mm -hmm. But uh, I heard a lot of good things about Wise Fab, and I just uh, thought I would give it a try. So, and uh, you know, I mean, James Dean runs Wise Fab, and <laughs> I would say he's the best drifter in the world. So. If the yeah. best in the world is going to run it, I think I could run it too. So, yeah. the, um, how does it feel with uh, two different angle kits? It, car run the car is is amazing. I don't think uh, I think uh, PBM makes a really good kit. I think uh, it's not their limit brake kit in the rear; it's their first kit. And uh, yeah, I think everything's really well. It works really well mm -hmm. together. Um, the car hooks and books. Hell yeah. So what kind of body kit is this? So this is kind of a mix of a body kit. Um, these are Origin front fenders. And uh, I think actually the rear end, the rear fenders are 2F. And I'm pretty sure the front bumper and the side skirts are 2F. You said 2F performance? 2F performance, yes sir. That's nice. their like super doof type kit. It mm -hmm. hangs nice and low. I really like the way it looks. Um, the rear bumper is just a stock bumper that I shaved to cut to fit the uh, Rocket Bunny rear diffuser. I don't really like a lot of rear bumper kits, um, so this look to me was pretty perfect. Um, yeah, that rear spoiler looks cool. Yeah, so that's custom too. That was uh, We bought a spoiler and it didn't fit the car how we wanted to, so we chopped it up and fiberglassed it to make it our own. Oh. And then uh, I actually uh, designed and 3D printed the car canards on the car too. So wow, yeah. What was the process like for that? Um, I'm a I'm a machinist, so I work with CAD a lot, and uh, so it was just fun for me, really. Yeah. It's just uh, it's something I like doing, and and I like these canards, and I blow them up every time I come out, and they're really expensive to buy them. So I was like, you know what? I'm just I went and took some measurements and kind of made my own design, and was like. This looks pretty sick to me, and uh, it's pretty cheap for me to print them out at this point. So uh, it that's was, so uh, cool. Like CAD design seems so interesting. It is really fun. I really oh, yeah. enjoy it. Like to be able to make something from your mind and then put it into a 3D uh, item and then actually print it and hold it in your hand is pretty satisfying uh, production there. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> nice. Is there anything uh, you want to talk about the interior? Yeah, totally. So uh, it seems everyone that normally that I talk to really enjoy the interior, which I personally love. Uh, I went for a pretty simple type look here. I mean, the roll cage is 
not simple. It's that's basically waiting for maximum protection on the roll cage here. And uh, but everything else, I just wanted it to be real simple. Not too many buttons. Everything's uh, basically on a button, though. You know, you got your fuel pump, your fans, your lights. Uh, recently put rock lights because we were doing nighttime stuff last night. Um, the dash is flocked in this purple color, which I personally love. Um, yeah, it looks really nice. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it was it was a cool process. My buddy's all into racing and hot rods, and he actually showed me, and he was like, dude, check this out. And I was like, I don't know. And then I ended up doing it, and I was like, man, this is this is sick for sure. <laughs> Does it actually um, absorb the sun? Absolutely. So like it doesn't like reflect? Zero glare. It's, it's totally, it works functionally, and it's form at the same time. It's a beautiful thing. Oh. Yeah, and then uh, we've got... The Stimtech handbrake in there, which I absolutely love. Uh, it's just works really well. It has no weird movement or anything like that on there. I went through a bunch of different handles that just were never working for me and they would just get weird and wobbly and stuff like that. So Stimtech did an amazing job on that handle right there. You said it was Stimtech? Stimtech, yeah. They're actually pretty big in BMWs for, I think that's their main stuff that they do. They a lot, a lot of uh, billet parts for BMWs, but uh, wow. So yeah. what was the issue you had with other handbrakes? Like the you know, it was the bra it was like the mechanism would end up like coming loose halfway through the day and then the the e-brake would actually come over and like hit the steering wheel like when you tried to pull it and it just like it would be like really sloppy and yeah. no matter how much i tried to tighten in i made bushings and, and i just couldn't get it dialed in so yeah, that's kind of dangerous like as soon as you grab the handbrake it's like it's like moving around it definitely uh, put me in some bad situations a few times so i'm yeah. i'm really um particular about having a nice handbrake and this is the best one i have found so far that billet looks nice it it's is like, and it is also beautiful so it yeah. helps a lot <laughs> kind of hard to miss that when you drive it right yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah and then that shift knob is kind of a uh a, a, a more custom thing for me it's a I'm, like I said, I'm a machinist, and uh, this is actually a tool that is used in uh, when you are a machinist that helps remove collets from machines. So, if you were a machinist, you would know what it was. Actually, a friend of mine got in the car, and he does some machine work, and he was like, "Is that shift knob what I think it is?" And I was like, "Yes, it <laughs> is." And like, I just kind of put a little custom touch on it just to make it more like a shift knob. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, it's a piece that I really like, and and other machinists would get a kick out of as well so. is it actually pretty grippy when you're it feels great yeah <laughs> it, it, the knurling on it definitely uh feels good and then i made like i put a radius in the bottom of it so your fingers sit in there nicely too so nice. yeah yeah this this roll cage looks nuts yeah it's so like, we went we went pretty all out on the cage it's got intrusion bars it was basically uh the car was going to be a comp car at one point so i just found like the fd rule spec and we just went with that so no matter where we go, we would pass tag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, better you're safe than sorry. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. When the, this car is pretty fast, so, I mean, uh, you don't want it to get away from you and something bad could happen quick, so. <laughs> is there anything else you want to talk about? Or? Yeah, I mean, uh, one more thing on the interiors. These, uh, I love these Bridge Moto belts. They are the, uh, the 2.5 inch, but then they have the nice 3 inch. Uh, it feels really good on your shoulders and everything like that and I think they are the only ones that come out with the coolest colors like this so uh, just recently got that loving that belt there uh, and I have I use their gloves and their shoes too their their gear is like super quality and super good price and colors that just nobody else comes out with so definitely and then uh, in the back of the car here we have a uh, uh, radium fuel cell set up so oh, we wow. went, yeah the whole car has got uh hard line fuel lines in it and uh yeah the trunk is cut out and uh b rolled same with the rear firewall everything basically my buddy that helped me with the car he's uh he's into hot rods and so everything that they kind of we brought that like hot rod ish uh bead roll look to most of the stuff that we could get in here so this is so clean it's like crazy yeah i definitely uh i i take pride in the car being clean i think uh like i said drifting is a lot about style 
and some people forget that and yeah I mean you want to go have fun and everything and go fast and all that but I think style should definitely be a big part of it and, yeah, yeah I think you should clean your car you know yeah. what I'm saying <laughs> wash it do yeah. something wipe it down <laughs> definitely uh, is this more to save room or uh, what's that this looping the hoses like the that? looping the hose so this is so fuel slosh doesn't come up when I have like a full tank okay um, I've never seen that before right? yeah it like that. right so some people do like rubber line or whatever but I just did a lot of hard line so I just kind of wanted to do some more hard line in there I thought it looked better than a rubber hose getting weird in there so these are hard lines right here this is a hard line yeah oh, wow. yeah this is actually aluminum uh, fuel line but okay. it goes so I had to go soft from here but then from here I just thought that the hard line looked cooler and cleaner like that so yeah definitely yeah then uh, in, deep, deep down inside there we have the AccuSump um, like I said this I this block was LS2 and then I spun the rod bearings on it and uh, yeah, Akusam do a lot of a lot of work of saving the motor. So so far. Would you recommend that for like a even like a stock LS? Yes, or? absolutely. If you're gonna LS, uh, a lot of people say you're fine with the pan. I had a, a Canton um, some pan that was good and, and it was baffled and all that, and I still uh, rotted my motor pretty quickly. So yeah, if you're LS, it does have an issue, and I would absolutely go Akusam. It's really not that expensive. Pretty easy to set up comparatively to dry sump obviously dry sump is king but you're gonna spend you know yeah. at least five grand on that so definitely a lot more expensive <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so uh, you want to start it up for us? yeah absolutely so the exhaust is also uh, custom three inch stainless um, all TIG welded uh, or big welded uh, yeah <laughs> and uh, it's it's two to one it was uh, uh one of my local events they have a sound ordinance the car used to be straight pipe and uh it just wasn't the clean sound that i liked and so we have a boiler type s muffler on here now and yeah it's a y pipe three inch all the way back and i love the sound first oh yeah Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, back here at the exhaust. If you I, personally, I love the idle exhaust sound because you just hear that chop. Yeah. It's not a very heavy cam, but a uh, nice little mild cam in it. It just sounds good. Yeah, I enjoy it for sure. It's the sound of my people. <laughs> the two to one it, it has a lot of airflow still we still made a lot of power with it and it gives it a lot more of a refined sound to me so oh, yeah. well I really appreciate your time and talking to you with the car about it hey I appreciate you uh being interested in the car and seeing all the hard work that was put into it you know I mean so many hours put into this car and uh and I love it when people enjoy it because that's what we're all here for so oh yeah dude thank you yeah dude thank you, thank you. oh yeah I just gotta get some footage of you driving. Okay, sick. I'll be out there for sure. I'm gonna go and uh